Heyo, what is going on everybody? Dan Trampty here and welcome back to my tutorial series, Browser Noise. This is tutorial number 17 and today I want to explore just a few more synthesizers and then I think we'll be ready to move on to some real projects, okay? So, we have this beat. It's great and all. I'm always dancing in this series, by the way. Uh, but um, it could use some melodic and harmonic content, am I right? So. Let's go to the Tone.js API and see what kind of synths we can explore. So I'm going to do a quick find. And the first one that's listed is the AM synth. And what this stands for is Amplitude Modulation Synth. Okay, And what it means is that it is made up of multiple oscillators. There is a carrier oscillator. Here, let's actually go to it. There's a carrier oscillator, which is the main one that we hear. There is also a secondary oscillator called the modulator. So, and the idea is that we don't actually hear the secondary oscillator directly. In fact, its output is not connected to the master output. So, um, we do hear the modulation signal indirectly, however, because of the way it modulates or modifies the carrier signal over time. So, let's use it. First, we'll declare a variable called am synth, and then in our setup function, we will set am synth equal to a new tone dot am synth dot oh open close parentheses dot to master open close parentheses, and then in our song, we will let's go ahead and when our counter reaches zero, so counter equals zero. And if you remember what our counter does, it counts from zero to 15 and loops back to zero when it's done. We will call am synth dot trigger attack release, open close parentheses. If you remember, or if we look at the API um, to see what trigger attack release, accepts, you'll see it's a note, then the duration, then the time, then the velocity. So uh, the note we'll give it is a C, you know, three or something. Then the duration will be, we'll give it a 16th note, something like that. Time, of course, don't forget to pass in time. And then uh, for a velocity, we could give it maybe a 0 0.8. Let's hit run and check that out. You can hear once a measure, you can hear that tone of a C3. All right, let's go back to the API, grab the JSON, which contains all the default settings for our synth, and then inside our synth, we'll open it up and paste that in. Hit Shift Tab to beautify it, and then let's stringify the things that need to be the strings, which are actually only these two things, the, the AM synth type and the modulation type, okay? I actually, this brings me to a point uh, about the previous tutorial. I stringified a bunch of things that don't actually need to be strings, like all of these key of our key value pairs, they don't need to be strings. I just did it out of habit because I guess I knew that it would work, I suppose. Let's hit run, make sure that it still works. Very good. Now that we have our JSON, just as we did with the symbol synth in the previous tutorial, we can go ahead and adjust some of these um, defaults. Like for example, try out a different carrier signal type, like a sawtooth here, or maybe, uh, you can adjust the modulation signal and uh, I usually like to add a little or make the attacks of things a lot shorter so that uh, certain adjustments that I make are a little clearer. Uh, sometimes the modulation envelope can like really make it hard to hear other adjustments. So let's hear that. Okay, the next thing is super important. So listen up. If we want to change the frequency of a synthesizer, we, as you probably know, we handle that in our song below, right? Like maybe this isn't low enough for me and I'm gonna change it to an A1, hit run. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a good adjustment actually. Um, but here's the thing. 
if we want to change the frequency of the modulation signal, if we go up to the, uh, the JSON and you think about like, okay, maybe you would go to modulation and there would be some key value pair, the key being frequency and the, and that, and there you can adjust the frequency and set the member to that. But the problem is like, it's not done that way. Okay. It, it seems, it seems like that would be the obvious thing, but rather this is all done by adjusting this value key value pair up here, the harmonicity. So what does that mean? Well, I think you should think of it like this. We want to input some sort of fraction. Okay. Right now the default is a three, but think of it as a three over one. Whereas, three corresponds to the frequency of the modulation signal and the one corresponds to the frequency of the carrier. So the thing that's kind of confusing, but it makes sense when you think about it is the fact that this was designed with the assumption that most users that want to use the, a synth like this will simply prefer that the modulation frequency is tied to the carrier frequency. It's like a child of the carrier, if that makes sense. So every time you write a new note in the song, you don't have to determine its modulation frequency. It instead updates automatically. Just so we can hear it a little better, I'm going to change the frequency to A2 and the volume all the way up to 1. So let's make sure, yeah, that's that's a little more easier to hear. So if I want the modulation frequency to be five times the carrier frequency, which is currently in A2, I would make this harmonicity value a five over one. Now let's hear that. Very different. If I want the modulation and the carrier signals to be the exact same thing, we'll just set it to a one. Hear that? So right now, the modulation signal is oscillating at a frequency of A2, if that makes sense. And if we want to drop it an octave so that the modulation signal is an octave below the carrier, we can just say 1 over 2. Let's hear that. In fact, if we want to hear the individual pulses of the modulation signal, we could drop it really low so that it becomes what's called an LFO or low frequency oscillator. So I'm gonna throw in a one over 80 here. Let's hear that. Yeah, it's as I expected. It The modulation is now so low that we can't hear it. So if we bring our bass frequency to an A5 or something like that, yeah you can hear the individual pulses of the modulation signal. So what we're gonna do for now is I, for, first let's bring it back to an A2, I like a low, and then we'll pick a, a fraction that will be kind of like, it's the modulation and the carrier signals are really close together, so we'll get kind of like a beating effect sort of situation. Yeah, I like that. All right, let's make this song a little bit more interesting. I'm gonna grab our if statement and make a second case in which we are triggering on the 10th, 16th note of our lo loop, which is looping from zero to 15, just to remind you again. And, you know, let's adjust the note. So we'll go back to low, we'll try low. And instead of A2, we'll go something that is a half step higher. So a B flat, one. Let's try that. Oh yeah. Perfect. Oh my gosh. Okay. So let's check out a different synth. So I'm going to look up the FM synth, which is right here in our API. And it's a very similar thing to our AM synth in that there are two oscillators. It's just that the modulation oscillator affects the frequency of the carrier, not the amplitude of the carrier like the AM, right? This is FM for frequency modulation, not amplitude modulation. So let's go ahead and declare FM synth. 
and initialize it. We'll put it right after our AM synth. Uh, FM synth equals new tone dot FM synth, open close parentheses, dot to master, open close parentheses, boom. And then I'm just going to go ahead to say and save some time, copy and paste our if statements. <laughs> We're getting kind of sloppy, I'm sorry. And replace our AM synth. Let me grab that, hit D with an FM synth. And then let's just hear what that sounds like. Yeah, and then we're gonna go here and grab our JSON, copy and paste that into our FM synth, which is right here. Open, open up these parentheses, paste it, hit Shift Tab, and we need to stringify a few things, I believe. Anytime we have a value that is a word, we'll make sure that it's a string and then the harmonicity is the same thing here as the a AM synth. Think of it as uh, mod synth over carrier synth, okay? So uh, we'll try a few values, uh, something like 1.1. Very cool. I'm just, I'm gonna go with something like one over three. That's so dirty. Oh my gosh. Let's try just two over three. Let's add some zeros here. Whoa, that's crazy. One over three. One over two. One point one. I think we just need to boost these up an octave. So I'm gonna put it at A2 and B2. Notice I'm just experimenting a lot. Oh yes. Oh yes. <laughs> Honestly, do we need any more than this? Like we basically have techno running in the browser, which is perfect in my opinion. So, but um, I guess just to show that we can have things in the treble range and do a few other cool things, I'll add one more instrument. All right, so let's declare a variable called pluck synth. And then in our setup function, we'll set pluck synth equal to a new tone dot pluck synth open close parentheses dot to master open close parentheses boom and then we'll go to the bottom and we're going to want to trigger this every single eighth note so to do that we'll say if counter percent or mod two equals zero we shall pluck synth dot trigger attack release and we'll give it a high note like a b6 or something and then 16th note and then time and then something a little lower like 0.4 let's hit run oh yeah now uh we can have 16th notes so that it's altering alternating so let's go ahead and grab this whoops copy that paste it in here and instead of b6 we'll give it a different note like a g sharp six so it's like a minor third away my my jaw is hold on let me get my face this is this is where i was <laughs> so this is amazing it reminds me of i know what it is Night Rider. The Night Rider theme song. It's a television show. Look it up. Okay, so I think we're pretty much done with this. I we're still in like this intro to Tone JS. We're not working on a real project. I just wanted to do something fun to get people excited about using Tone JS. But there's so much that we could clean up here. I I've been really messy. I have hardly been adding any comments, which is bad. I've also been like super inconsistent with my use of semicolons. Uh, I think that's due to the fact that if you look at a lot of the examples in Tone.js, uh, I think 
it's just like the tone JS style is maybe to not use semicolons and I've been using them. So I'm like sort of in between styles at the moment. Um, and maybe I should choose one. Um, also there's a lot of things to clean up here. So like, for example, this could all be done in two lines of code. Let me, uh, grab this loop beat and chain it to the end of our when we initialize our loop and then we can add we'll chain the dot bpm dot value to our tone dot transport everything should work the same perfect and finally i highly recommend that you take this infrastructure and make your own grooves try to imitate a genre that you like using these if statements on the counter, just as I have done. You may want to also expand the duration of the loop if you don't want it to be just like one measure long. And you might also explore other synthesizers. And yeah, I hope it helps you get a feel for Tone.js. I want to move on and start working on some real projects now. Uh, for example, the next one is going to be a tap metronome, which is like an actual useful utility for the world. <laughs> um, so I'll see you then later.